Hello and welcome to another RCT2 review stream. Today we are looking at Bumbly Beach by Jappy. This is a gold winning park back uh, last year in early 2019. Uh, it is an inspiration of the uh, Bumbly Beach, uh, or inspired by the Bumbly Beach scenario uh, in the original Roller Coaster Tycoon game, which is definitely a classic scenario, one of my favorites of the time. Um, and kind of sets, they ask the question, what would that park look like if it was built in a more realistic setting uh, and expanded over the years kind of in a realistic fashion? Uh, and I think the end result is pretty cool. Um, you see a lot of seaside parks in RCT, but the nice thing is that there's such a variety of them in styles that you can do that you can make a bunch of these without being too, too similar to other ones. I know earlier on the channel we reviewed Fred's uh, park um, that was also uh, an American take on the uh, waterfront park uh, or beachfront park, but uh, this one feels entirely different even though it shares some similarities um, in some spots. But let's, uh, let's jump right in. We're going to start in the park and then we'll take a look at the uh, outside stuff a little later on. <clears throat> so we've got our big uh, entrance here. This is the main entrance to the park with the ticket booths and uh, the queue coming through uh, for the turnstiles. The uh, wooden coaster here, Big Dipper, is uh, shared the general layout and uh, form of the one in the uh, scenario um, and goes kind of out and back in an L-shaped layout. Uh, thankfully, this one doesn't crash like the one in the scenario did, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's looking good. So let's, uh, let's jump in. We have a nice compact variety of buildings and rides and everything in here. Pretty typical of a seaside park. And um, in my opinion, they're really well done. There's theming on different things, but there's not like heavy theming. It feels very much uh, kind of homespun or temporary in some cases. So a couple of nice little entrance buildings here. Here's a little gift shop and you can see the interior details, which I always like seeing those. Um, same turning the other way we have uh, what looks like a little guest services building perhaps and then uh, a couple of vending machines here um, and then coming around the corner we have uh, the gift shop for the coaster presumably um, and then as you come in there's a queue space behind that building nice little queue entrance here a little height stick uh, as a detail there i do like the raised queue coming across and then into the station the station's pretty um uh pretty standard fare but uh got four little towers on the corners and uh, a rectangular building, but that's appropriate for what this kind of a station uh, would be. Uh, we have a little drop in a pre-lift section here before. We'll wait on the blue train. Um, a lot of times the older wooden coasters, such as this kind of a ride, that would be tunneled. Uh, there's no real reason why it wouldn't be. Um, I think some of this is based off of uh, some of the coasters at Blackpool, for example, like uh, the traditional roller coaster there, which is also a 1920s variation. Uh, so here we go, uh, dropped underneath the station as Green Train returns, Blue Train is off to the races. I like the flags on the lift hill, I think that's a good little detail and gives some uh, additional motion to the, the overall park as a whole. Alright, so let's enjoy this uh, as it cruises past that little billboard there. A couple of airtime hills, banked corner, you don't need, necessarily need to bank that, but I think it looks fine if it is. Pretty fast turnaround. Dives underneath the single rail. Then we're going to hop over the entrance. And then just a series of airtime hills all right in a row. And then a flat corner here at the end. Um, great layout. I think it, it works well being inspired by the real thing or the, the scenario um, while also kind of taking some creative liberties to make the, make the ride look good. Uh, being that that last corner is unbanked, I probably would have also unbanked this one and maybe this one. Uh, this 180 is taken at a pretty good speed, so it might be better than it's banked. Or, I mean, the opposite, this could just be banked to give that a little bit of um, uh, decrease of lateral Gs there because it could be pretty, pretty intense. All right, so back into the park itself. Uh, we have our carousel here. Um, kind of a nice little uh, just uncovered carousel. Um, I know the standard is to put some kind of a big structure over top of it, but I mean the in-game carousel's got its own structure. And I think it looks fine as it is. I like the little gardens around it, the little operator booth here with the little spire, um, and 
the the fact that it's kind of visible on this side and then kind of has the gardens padding it on the back side it's a nice um nice little arrangement as far as as uh path work and site work goes um we have our go-karts here up underneath the um uh, uh underneath the coaster um pretty standard fair invisible go-karts uh using the tire scenery and then also the uh single rail coaster here as the uh, go-kart barrier um kind of loops around and does a couple of laps and uh, comes right back to the start. You can hack this with a pit lane, although it, it makes it just difficult and maybe a little bit of a uh, pain sometimes. Uh, I do like this guy in the back of the gift shop here where there's a, uh, uh, it says broken cart and then we have our uh, little maintenance peeps and everything back here also. So nice details as well, thinking of both the front uh, guest phasing things and also those back of house items. Um, so here is a great looking uh, structure. This reminiscent of a dance hall that you might see in some of the 1920s theme parks. Um, a number of them still exist uh, in some fashion or another. Uh, nice and bright. I like the colors on there. I like the spinning uh, uh, theme pieces here um, and just these colonnades on the bottom and just all the various other little details for the building itself. Uh, this just houses the sky ride as far as rides go. Uh, which goes up and over and off into yonder, where we'll explore a little bit later. Um, but back out on this main path, we'll uh, continue along, have a couple of more little buildings here, and then we're going to get to uh, this coaster here. This is the Steeplechase. Uh, I really appreciate seeing rare coasters uh, built in the game. Uh, just we, we have a nice variety of coasters in the game, but we always kind of seem to default to the wooden coasters and the B&Ms and the Intamins of the world. So it's always nice to see something like this, and it fits appropriately. This is a very Blackpool approach to uh, to ride design, uh, as there are three of these steeplechase coasters in Blackpool. Uh, so we have our green and our yellow uh, turning out of the station here into lift one. Um, I love the interaction with the go-kart track and the wooden coaster, and also these supports, which are very realistic to the real thing. Uh, Arrow Dynamics built two of these, uh, one at Knott's Berry Farm and one at uh, Blackpool. Uh, three at Blackpool, four at Knott's, and uh, fortunately the Knott's one doesn't exist anymore, but uh, you can still ride the Blackpool one, so always good to have that kind of uh, rare coaster preserved. Uh, so second lift up and over the station queue area, and then a couple of these cool uh, little drops, flat corner here, and then uh, a couple more drops back into the station itself. Now we also have some queue cover or some uh, bridges over top of the pathway here as well, just from a falling object standpoint, which is a nice little touch. We'll go over into the back of the park here, cross underneath that steeplechase, which uh, I should mention too, has some really nice uh, and the green details here with the uh, conifer hedge fences, the little uh, jump here from the um, horse steeplechase course and everything like that. Uh, coming to the back here, a little seating area uh, up against this restaurant. Uh, we have our uh, Disaster Voyage. This is an inverted swinging ship that has some good details, including the operator booth here and then the lights on the backdrop of the, of the ride itself. Kind of would have been neat to see maybe a larger backdrop so you can hide that back of house shed building, but um, perhaps the park didn't uh, set that up. Uh, also, some nice little details there, the litter bins in the back, the vehicle, the little car there, um, and then all the signs on the the back wall itself I think is cool. Here we have Mission Space. So this is a uh, launch tower. I uh, really like this this little deco piece here at the shop on the side. Uh, this is kind of what I'm talking about where, where there's good theming but it's kind of self-contained to the ride. Um, it kind of clashes with a bunch of the other stuff around it and that fits the seaside park aesthetic really really well. Um, so little bit of a launch tower up out the roof and then up the top. I would have maybe liked to have seen some kind of a little detail on the top or maybe just one more piece on there. Um, it gets a little closer than it might in real life, for example. Uh, a little little more uh, there, a little too close for comfort. But uh, this is neat, the little rocket here uh, sitting on top. Um, maybe a little hard for the guests to see, but I think from an RCT perspective and you as the viewer looking at looking kind of down onto the ride, uh, that's a cool touch and um, just really cool facade, one of my favorites in uh, the park. A couple more little uh, pieces here. So this is a queue line for Caterpillar. Uh, 
that's right here. This is a shoestring drive. This is called uh, Wacky World. Um, cruising. It's fast. Uh, it's maybe a little, a little too fast at uh, 30, 40 miles per hour, um, which is a little, uh, a little fast for that kind of a ride. But I do appreciate that it's shoestring and it takes guests and uh, it's got the appropriate key covers and all that, or ride cover and everything like that. It's, it's a little big in RCT in, in general, and it's just one of the difficulties of the game as far as scale goes, because really this Frisbee next to it will probably end up being almost dominating this ride as a whole from a scale standpoint, but, um, you know, you can't necessarily pick and choose, and I'm really happy that this ride is here with the detail that, that comes with it. Um, over to this Frisbee, so this is, uh, I can't click on it, it's extreme, extreme. Very seaside park appropriate kind of name. Nice hacking as well. Um, good use of the uh, objects here to, to make this look um, you know, appropriately like some kind of a, a swing ride. So um, using the Huss um, tower uh, object or arm object that I think G-Wiz made uh, and then the, the motor room on the top. Uh, spinning around, we've got a couple little game stalls here. I love the little like claw games uh, with the prizes inside. And then this little food cart here in the middle. And just all the little game stalls. Here's a little first aid. Um, another uh, shop and some other little bits and pieces. It shows that you don't need a lot of space to make a really nice looking building or a really nice looking space. I mean, this is a 1x2, 2x2, 2x2. Here's just a 1x1 one one little thing. And it it's done well in a way that's not repetitive and doesn't look... Uh, look bad. It looks just really nice. I mean, here's a little basketball game. Um, really pushing the game stalls pretty heavily, which I like. It's appropriate for this kind of a park. All right, so let's come back underneath the steeplechase, and then we're going to go down uh, this kind of midsection here. We have this really bright red building, which jumps out among the other colors, but I like that there's a lot of bright colors in the space for one. Um, and then we get into the uh, log flume here that's got a a bit of rock work it's kind of neat uh, this rock work isn't necessarily something that you see uh, often but it is done in some places such as, as log flumes and things like this um, it kind of looks appropriately artificial which I appreciate uh, so the log flume is really crammed into uh, into the space it really looks like it was working around existing stuff uh, like this enterprise ride right here um, that has a pretty snazzy cute cover with the, the splashing lights and everything but out of the uh the rocky river station here we go up the lift hill turn the corner there's a little bit of a drop right behind the uh, uh here there's really no containment for the splash which i think is probably the one uh, maybe complaint that i would have for it is that um there's going to be some wet walls on that station that aren't going to last too long if that's not watched out for but um Little lift hill number two up to another little dip here, wrap around over the pathway, and then lift three, which goes over everything and down the big drop with the splash. I like these big supports here, those are very nice, and the way that it works over the buildings as well. Glass piece here to uh, shield these diners from getting soaked. Um, and I would imagine if you stand a little further down, you can maybe get splashed if you want. Uh, Neat design here that there's a tunnel at the end, and then also the building here, the back of it has this cool western looking facade with the cacti and then just the clouds and the blue sky and everything. That's a really, really great touch and something that uh, I like here, especially with the detailing of all the various parts and pieces. So really, really well done. Um, I feel like a log flume is almost a necessity in one of these kind of parks, but uh, they're often sort of hard to do well, and I think this one is done well. Uh, here we have uh, another little, uh, well, actually not little, it's a pretty big restaurant. This is maybe the biggest restaurant in the park uh, here with uh, the seating up on the roof, which is kind of a nice touch because you can look out over top of the rest of the park as you come around. Um, let's see, does this one have a name? This is uh, Brimble's Burgers and uh, Brimble's Caffeine Delight and Brimble's Pizza, which I like. That's quite nice. Uh, on this front uh, midway here, there's another basketball game, like a three-point challenge sort of thing. And then a couple of staples of the fairground seaside type park, uh, the bumper cars, which are housed underneath of this large building facade. 
And then uh, a must-have in every seaside park is a dark ride. So this is Harold's Haunted House. Some, really, some pretty cool facade elements here with this uh, uh, dragon thing that's breathing the smoke there and the, the castle facade element here. Uh, really done in, in sort of a almost cartoonish fashion, but still sort of menacing and uh, offers a little bit of uh, terror for the kids, perhaps. Uh, pretty simple layout here. Uh, unfortunately, no theming inside, which is fair. Um, there's not a whole lot of space to do it in, but uh, actually, it's a, it is a pretty long layout for the like four four by ten space that we have to work with. Um, and then the swing on this side. So this is the Bumbly Swinger. Uh, Skyride goes over top of it, which is kind of neat. Uh, here is the, a pretty nice uh, pylon for those Skyride elements. Uh, we'll keep on going to the Scrambler here, which has a really great backdrop facade. Um, another operator booth. This kind of feels like it was pulled off of the fairground circuit and installed in here, which I appreciate. Looks good. Um, the curb on the Skyride is something that I haven't really seen on many Skyrides. I've, I've seen, you know, the, the full turn around and head back the other way, like a terminus for the ride, but I've rarely seen a turn on a sky ride that's up high such as this. Usually they're down and disengage the cable before re-engaging it once again. So it's a little odd to me, but perhaps there's some uh, real life precedent there that I'm just not aware of. Um, but here's the other station on our little uh, uh, games area there and uh, wraps around, connects to this back pathway here where you have the couple of games area here. And then this is the Madhouse which uh, does not have a ride, it looks like, but I think the intention is that it might be like a either a uh, funhouse type area or like a Vakoma madhouse that uh, has the spinning room of, of kind of sorts. Here is the Blue Poison, uh, which is a little frog hopper ride with uh, a pretty nice facade there as well uh, in the backdrop. Arcade in the back here, which is again a must in an arcade uh, or in a seaside type park uh, Really checking off all those things that you ought to have in a place like this um, Bring back to what I would imagine is the most recent coaster in the um, In the park. So this is uh, Tyran or Tyran um, Has some pretty neat like industrial looking theming. I really like this circle around the vertical lift hill uh, this is a Gerslauer Eurofighter. Um, so queue underneath this area, a lot of cool theming elements, some rock work in the back here. Definitely a higher spend for this kind of a park, but uh, it works. Nice little uh, vertical lift here, up uh, cresting to a uh, what would be a bound vertical drop. Airtime Hill with some of that detailing with the Heartline Twister. Come way around, wrapping the existing rides to a loop. And then a uh, roll here, and then a dive into a uh, final helix here. This layout reminds me of Speed at Oakwood. Uh, it's a pretty sort of kind of similar layout with some custom elements in there. It would be cool to see block breaks and everything like that, um, but the spacing of the vehicles is such that it still feels kind of appropriately realistic uh, for what's going on here. Uh, uses the space very well above the existing stuff around other existing things things such as this are a little bit of a challenge so there wouldn't be a footer on top of the building for example the column would go all the way down through the building uh, kind of structurally separate and then have a, uh, a footer down in the bottom or it would be spanned with some kind of a clever support work it might have been kind of neat to see that as far as like supporting goes over top of the building without touching it but uh, that also can become cluttered and a little bit messy if, if that is uh, how all that goes. All right, so this is Galaxy Burger and uh, other items in this little shop here. We can presume that it was rethemed when this all came in and uh, was added um, uh, since it was clearly existing before this ride uh, Bolt came in. Uh, being a Schwarzkopf, that means this was a little bit of an earlier ride. So some of these elements are a little bit older than others. Uh, let's turn around here and watch the Schwarzkopf. Uh, we have our straight drop into a hill, a nice curve, and come around and then a couple of other airtime hills, and then we'll end with a number of helixes. Uh, you know, reasonably appropriate Schwarzkopf layout. Um, 
the hills and everything kind of are reminiscent of the wooden coaster. Would have been neat to see a loop on this one, but uh, I guess that would make the loop on the uh, uh, the Gerslauer here a little less special. I do like that the Helix wraps this uh, Roto Drop ride, the Gyro Drop uh, from Intamin, which um, kind of used in the standard colors uh, in the game with the red and the yellow, but they actually work pretty well. Um, I maybe would have liked to have seen a new custom custom top on this with some kind of appropriate filigree on top perhaps, but Q line up underneath the coaster, which is, is quite nice. And then um, we have in here, so this is the Time Traveler's Assistant. So I'm assuming this is a uh, dark ride of sorts in here. I'm not quite sure what the ride is since it's invisible, but um, really cool theming again on this one. Uh, same with the um, Schwarzkopf coaster here also. As we wrap around, we can see there's a second entrance on uh, this side of the pier further down, which maybe makes sense a little bit more since the town is uh, clearly right here. Uh, so maybe over time the town has grown on this side and uh, maybe this entrance is now more of a primary than it used to be. Uh, there's a Ferris wheel right here looking over the beach, which is a good place for it, especially a Ferris wheel of this kind of a size. Um, Back to the Plaza with Galaxy Burger, we've got a couple of uh, little 2x2 two two flat rides, unfortunately not operating, but uh, nice to have those moving and, and running. Um, so here's the Cookie Bus um, little shop, and a few other elements here, such as the games uh, on here. Just I, I appreciate that all the games have little variations to them, so they're, they're not, they don't become too similar uh, throughout all the different areas. Um, they still feel kind of fresh in each one of the spaces. Uh, and then last case, let's turn work back around again, and we can see the wild mouse. So this is a wooden wild mouse, of which there are only a couple left. Um, unfortunately, Blackpool Blizzard Beach demolished theirs uh, the other year. Uh, so the only places you can ride these now are Australia and Indonesia. Uh, so limited time, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully those remaining will stick around for a little bit. Uh, pretty nice uh, facade, similar to the Blackpool variety, where there was the structure and the the uh, kind of strip around the top with the flashing lights. I do like that uh, queue up underneath of it. It almost feels a little too narrow um, and requires us to have the little jog here, but um, I do like the layout. It, it's got that um, feel like the Blackpool mouse did, where you have the oval with uh, a couple of switchbacks afterwards and then a couple of the drops further in the structure afterwards. Um, so it's it, it's appropriate to the type, it feels correct as far as layouts go and it just looks good. So that about wraps up into the park. There's just a lot of nice details to see. The colors work really well uh, together despite being all over the place. Um, kind of using every color and all the different bright colors, but they work really well. Uh, especially sort of these bold things like the red and yellow striping for the steeplechase structures and the kind of bright red of that one building, the orange and red of this building. It, it all looks quite nice as far as, as, far as that goes. Um, so let's jump out on to the boardwalk here. Um, less a boardwalk, more of a midway, so it's concrete. But uh, cool signboard and uh, these kind of structures throughout little information kiosk perhaps, or a little food service, maybe an ice cream shop. Um, clue in that it's a restaurant because of all the seating here. Um, here we have uh, strollers building and uh, the little strollers using the Millennium Flyer trains, which I think are uh, one of the better options for strollers. Uh, we've seen go-karts and Millennium Flyer trains as kind of two choices that uh, you can choose from to make some realistic uh, ones of those. I like the little bike objects here. And then just sort of the, the typical tat shop uh, that you might find on the beachfront. Uh, another uh, really cool sign uh, section here with this kind of billboard uh, of sorts. And down further, there's some uh, other little food stalls here and more seating, uh, which is quite nice. And then further down, we get to uh, one of my favorite areas, actually, in the whole space. Uh, the sand dunes, for one, which are really, really well done, uh, really subtle, but the uh, landscaping is done great, a little uh, less saturated green than some of the other areas, um, and it kind of has those appropriate striations there and the uh, undulations of the the waterfront, which uh, I really, really like. It's, it's just 
beautiful. And then this uh, miniature golf area, which is done super, super well, um, tastefully done in a uh, kind of uh, uh, appropriate realistic setting with some theming in here. I like the little windmill on top of the one hole. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten holes. Uh, not our typical 18, but at least you get a full nine plus one. Uh, nice seating area here, a little ice cream cone out front. Um, and just really great micro detailing here that um, elevates the, the park beyond, you know, just the park itself. A uh, couple of uh, different pieces here. So this is the Smoked Fish Company shop little pavilion here um, with some uh, cool little seating spaces and some terraced steps down to the beach itself where you've got a couple of rental options you can rent uh, some boats some dinghies here is uh, a uh, wind sail uh, vehicle uh, and then further down on the beach we have things like uh, the uh, paragliders uh, off of this little structure here a couple changing rooms a gift shop or a uh, vending machine um, and here's a little uh, vending place also. Um, I like the uh, bouncy castle here, a little queued up for that kind of thing. Um, more changing rooms here, sort of traditional English uh, seaside look. Lifeguard chair, uh, lots of beach loungers throughout. And I like that there's details and variety, they're not all the same. So everybody's got different um, uh, types of umbrellas, there's different types of towels and colors and these little screening uh, uh, fence type things and all of that. Here's a, just a standard balloon stall, but it works really well. Um, it feels like something you might see out there, which makes sense being that a lot of the RCT attractions were based off of real, real life stalls and things, so it fits. It doesn't need any more theming. And then also a little pier out here to the uh, uh, pedal. Uh, Swan boats, and then there's some rowboats on the other side. Kind of cool details of the waves coming in. And then further down, we have this fishing trawler. Uh, this is the Smoke Fish Company boat. Ties back to that little building there. And uh, the birds flying overhead is, is a really cool detail there. A couple things I missed here. Also, the uh, little sand castle that's being built. A little hole that this, this kid has dug uh, and starting to build up his little mound as well. Just so many cool small details and the things that really make the uh, subsequent viewings of this park better you know, each time that you look at it. Going over to the uh, town, the edge of the town here, we have a pretty nice boardwalk area with a couple of tree planters and everything. Um, a lot of concrete space but it's aged up a little bit and I like that there's space for it to breathe versus in the park where it's appropriately dense, the park only has a certain amount of space. Uh, this feels a little more friendly to uh, you as a viewer because uh, you have some space to look at everything and can enjoy it. Um, cool detailing here with this little hotel, a um, couple of levels of the hotel. Here's the bar at the bottom and uh, some other little elements. Uh, a little parking lot here and then we get into the uh, row houses. So a lot of these are residential or residential on the upper floors, commercial on the lower floors. So um, we have the Chinese food store here. Here's a little shop called Barnacles. Um, souvenir stall here, just sort of the most junky souvenir shop things that you might uh, see at the seaside. Another little hotel, uh, I'm assuming. And uh, what I like about these as you get into some of these back here, which we'll look at, is the variety. So these are all the same essential architecture houses, but they have uh, different colored doors, some different colored fences at the bottom. This one's getting renovated, so there's scaffolding all around it. Um, and then all the backyards have just different themed elements to them to give them a little bit of personality and character. Uh, I think the challenge with a lot of these kind of um, builds is that they can become sort of samey as you go along and it feels just repeated, like it's a chore. Of, of just filling in the map with, with something that, you know, fills in the map. But this is really well done and that there's just such a variety here. Let's look at all these different ones that have uh, similar colors, but they don't repeat. So, I mean, some of them eventually will repeat, which they should, but they're not all the same. So you have different roof colors, different facade colors, uh, different fences on the front, um, and just personality throughout. Um, interspersed with the other details like the, the litter bins, the road sign or the road lights and uh, then the roadway pieces itself. 
And same with all these backyard areas, like here's a little trampoline, here's a little conservatory type greenhouse uh, space, here's a little pool, a um, little tool shed out back, and uh, the various parts and pieces like that. On this side, we've got, you know, here's some folks having a smoke out back, there's a swing set on this one, here's a little uh, uh, a windmill, there's a slide on this one, uh, here's somebody sunbathing, can't miss the little TARDIS detail, which I do like. Um, and then the dumpster here with some overflowing trash and parts and pieces. Um, it's just so lively. I mean, almost as lively as the park itself, which I really appreciate because I, I think oftentimes these just don't end up looking good. Here's a little play area, which I like. Um, nice little details there. Um, kind of space to look longingly in at the park, which is kind of a little cruel to some children, I'm sure. Uh, but not too bad. Here's a little Tesco. Uh, shop with a parking area, a little bit of trash, um, looks like a covered uh, either uh, place for your carts uh, there, and then on the back side here we have um, some graffiti and various parts and pieces like that. Here uh, on the back side of the park is a little uh, storage, uh, storage facility with a uh, little beat up uh, in some spots with all the graffiti on the front and some of the signage, but we have a uh, Another um, little uh, restroom building here and a vending machine, just uh, lots lots to look at. Here comes the train. This is the uh, British Railway, Railways train. Uh, nice big station here with, uh, again, appropriate detailing as uh, we should. And I would expect this from Chappie as far as trains go to be very good and realistic. Uh, so this one's operating in shuttle mode, so we can at least have it uh, running here. A uh, really nice level crossing uh, with the signal uh, as well. Um, unfortunately, we can't have this properly operating, which would be a nice thing kind of thing to uh, long for eventually. And here's the British Rail symbol also. Um, I like the taxis with the little orange piece added to the standard SUV uh, element. Um, but I do like there's the traffic. It doesn't feel uh, too similar to what... Um, or it doesn't feel like it's just repeating itself. I mean, it goes all the way down. There's a couple of different directions of travel here, and it doesn't feel like overkill um, or take away from the overall viewing of the park. Uh, on the back side here is Bumbly Sands. So this is a little uh, mobile home community, as we would say. Some little details here, like the security guard telling this guy not to barbecue. Um, and again, a really nice variety of buildings. I mean, these are all one by three structures, all sharing a similar look, similar window arrangement and things like that. But each of them has a little different personality of its own, uh, from sunbathers to window boxes to uh, different colors and textures and all the different parts and pieces uh, alongside the little front uh, structure here also. Uh, it's just super, super well done as far as variety goes and um, the the detailing of the spaces without becoming too repetitive. Uh, and then we have our parking lot here. So that kind of wraps up our tour of the park uh, and the surroundings. Uh, there's a lot to see here, and I would encourage you to go take a download of this park and dig into it a little bit, because there's a lot of details that I missed, uh, too, or just uh, didn't talk about this time. Uh, lots to see, lots to look at, and... I really enjoy that kind of a thing, giving me stuff to click on, to explore, telling a story. Um, it really elevates the RCT park from just a recreation of something to kind of a, an art, storytelling art piece medium, uh, which is, is very neat. So uh, well done to Jappy on that. And uh, with that, we will end this review. So thank you once again for watching. Uh, if you would like to see your uh, own park reviewed or you have another park you'd like to see, please send me a note at nedesigns.com. Uh, Cedar Point 6 is my username. Uh, or leave a note in the YouTube comments um, and we will get to them. Um, so until next time, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, go check out uh, Bubbly Beach by Jappy on New Element. You can find the link in the description. Thank you very much.